The Spitfire, the Hurricane, the Thunderbolts. The de Havilland Mosquito is among them. Legendary for its tremendous war efforts in tactical missions such as Operation Jericho, a high-speed bomber and reconnaissance aircraft that could be modified to accomplish numerous tasks. Designed by Sir Geoffrey de Havilland, it was unchallenged in many aspects and an influence in more ways than just one. Sir Geoffrey de Havilland was born in 1882 and had a very deep interest in mechanical engineering. His early career was spent in the motor industry, but um, he eventually transferred to the Airco Company at Hendon, designing aircraft for the um, RFC and for the First World War use. Following the First World War, he formed a de Havilland Aircraft Company with one of the former partners of Airco, George Holt Thomas. The company were very successful and designed the Moth series of light aircraft being built at Stag Lane near Edgware. As the company became more successful in the 1920s, they outgrew Stag Lane and then moved to Hatfield and set up a factory there and produced aircraft like the Comet Racer, they produced the Mosquito, the Vampire, one of the world's first jet aircraft, and of course the de Havilland Comet, the world's first jet airliner. De Havilland's company, I think you could say, is one of the most innovative companies ever produced in the world, and Sir Geoffrey was the man really responsible for that. Between 1940 and 1950, over 7,000 Mosquito aircraft were manufactured by the de Havilland Aircraft Company and its subsidiaries. Across factories in England, Canada and Australia, more than 6,000 aircraft were built for warfare, operating a myriad of roles over countless crucial raids and missions against Nazi Germany opposition. Basically, the Mosquito was introduced in 1941 to the Royal Air Force Service as a high-speed bomber and reconnaissance aircraft. It was incredibly different because it was constructed of wood and during that period in the Royal Air Force infantry all the airplanes were made of metal. To make an aircraft of wood seemed a hell of a throwback but um, it was very effective because you got a vast woodworking industry that wasn't being used. There were no major problems to be honest compared to metal aircraft which was obviously the, um, the current thing of the day. Wooden aircraft were quicker to manufacture, easier to construct and employed a vast woodworking industry which was being untapped in wartime. It took a while to educate them to work to the really high tolerances that were required in wood, but once they'd mastered that, it was ready to be straightforward. The Mosquito is powered by two Rolls-Royce Merlin motors. Just four bolts and four nuts hold each big engine firmly in place. A tremendous horsepower, harnessed by only four slim bolts. The Mosquito was designed as a high-speed unarmed bomber and a photo reconnaissance aircraft, but as time moved on, the design proved so versatile that it could be adapted as a fighter, night fighter, coastal strike, photo reconnaissance. In fact, it was probably the most versatile aircraft of the Second World War. It was jack of all trades and master of each. Jericho was an attempt to release some um, resistance workers who were held in a prison in Amiens in northern France. The Mosquito was chosen to bomb the prison and break down the walls for prisoners to escape. The Mosquito was ideal for this because it was fast, could carry a heavy bomb load and could get away from enemy fighters relatively quickly at low level. Versatility, affordability and lightweight gave the Allied forces a major boost against Nazi Germany. Bomber variants dropped hybel bombs over the water that were bounced to avoid torpedo nets and destroy submerged targets like dams. The aircraft was a masterpiece of engineering and crucial to its cause, leading to the end of this conflict with the Allied forces tasting victory. I think it leaves behind a the value of persistence in believing in your own concept and uh, the innovative techniques that were used to produce it. It was so successful in so many different roles, but that would never have happened if de Havilland hadn't completely believed in the idea they had from the very beginning and pushed that through with the Air Ministry.